So we've got a Toro Time Cutter Z5035 V-Twin this morning. Customer brought it in just for a tune-up. We pulled it in to go ahead and tune it up and noticed uh, some major loss of power. At least it sounds that way. So we're going to check this out and show you what causes that on a zero-turn mower. What to look for, how to diagnose that, and how to get it taken care of so you don't have that issue. Now on this unit, it's got the Kawasaki FR691V engine on it. 24 horse V-twin. Good engines on these things. We're, we're happy with the design, happy with the power out of these things. Usually don't have too many issues whatsoever. So what you always want to do first with something like this, if you're losing power at all, is you want to check the, the fuel supply, check the carburetor, all that good stuff. Fuel in this smells great. It doesn't present as a fuel-related issue. Now, a lot of things, if you're getting snapping and popping and just erratic running out of something, it's most likely a carburetor issue. You know, a lot of times that's the case. People will think it's a valve issue or something like that. Normally isn't what's going on, but always start there. Uh, start at the most common issue and work your way backwards. Now on something like this, if it's only running, you know, five or 10 minutes and then you're having an issue with the engine dying uh, or something like that, you definitely want to pay attention to the pickup tube where the fuel comes in. That's why they say you're not supposed to have those ramps up there when, you, uh, um, when you're working on it. They fall quite often. But the pickup tube that goes down into the tank, a lot of times it'll get clogged right at the elbow here. Uh, just with debris or whatever. And it'll shut off fuel supply. So if you're running between 5 and <clears throat> 30 minutes and then your mower's shutting off, check that first. Check your pickup tube. Check your lines. A lot of times if they're cracked or dry rotted, they will suck down on themselves. So they'll collapse uh, over the course of the suction. Uh, cause restricted flow and eventually cause you to die. So again, first go to there. Obviously make sure your air cleaner is not restricted. Uh, that's a big loss of power issue also. This thing's got new air filter and everything on it. Uh, everything's been checked out, new fuel filter. But uh, from there, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna check your spark on each side. So uh, what we did is we went ahead and checked this thing out. Each individual side here you can test it independently. So if you, <clears throat> I'll fire this thing up and just show you how it sounds normally. So it's just kind of sounding restricted there. It doesn't sound like it has full power whatsoever uh, to a trained ear anyway. So if it's not sounding <clears throat> like it's getting full power on a V-twin, you could be operating on simply one cylinder. So if you take each spark plug off and you verify that each cylinder is working independently, you know at that point that there is spark on each side and that both sides have compression and, and so forth. Now that doesn't mean the compression on both sides is gonna match. It doesn't mean that each side is actually running real strong, but that's a little bit bigger of an issue. If we <laughs> So there we have it on that side, pretty much exactly the same. We know we're getting spark. Now, if you don't want to test it independently, you don't have to. You can always use a spark tester just to confirm you're getting spark. We use a spark checker, but it just kind of clips on the side. Tells us, you know, low, okay, or high spark. So it's showing okay there. So that's good. I'm gonna unplug the other side spark plug. And a lot of times this will present as low power going up a hill, low power, you know, going through tall grass, low power with a PTO on. There's a lot of different ways this, this problem presents. Well, that's always good. Nothing like a uh, backfire at 4.45 in the morning and <laughs> wake the neighbors up. Uh, this cylinder is not operating properly. Now, why is that? I'm not really sure at this point. We can test the spark. If you don't have a spark tester, again, you can hold the, you can remove the spark plug and hold it against the block and look for the spark between your probe and the outside edge. That'll tell you exactly whether you have spark or not. And you should visibly be able to see it. There shouldn't be anything in between the probe and the, and the outside and the ground, but that'll visually be able to tell you. 
We know we have spark on this side because we just got a good, uh, a good pop out of it, but let's make sure it's good. Go ahead and just fire it up again. Another good, good backfire there. Showed okay spark here, so we're happy with that. Definitely good to go. Now at this point, normally we'd go ahead and throw a compression test or something on it like that, but it doesn't sound like it's a compression issue. Sounds like it's a valve issue. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this valve cover off and see if that's what we have going on. It's just a simple valve issue. Now it could be a bent push rod, could be a, a valve not sealing right. Could be a few different things, but uh, a lot of times what you'll have is one side's not getting spark, so that cylinder isn't working whatsoever. Uh, if you're not getting spark on one spark plug or the other, obviously you can switch the plugs, try the other side, see if it sparks. Uh, very rarely a bad spark plug, but it is possible. Now, if you're not getting spark on one side or the other, what you can do is you can take the housing off and you can disconnect the wire uh, from the coil and check your spark at that point. Now you wanna make sure everything on the other side is disconnected because you don't want it to accidentally start or anything like that, but not too difficult to uh, check that out. Let me go ahead and use a 10 millimeter here and remove our valve cover and figure out what's going on. And again, a lot of times it's just bent push rod, uh, valve not seating right. Also the spacing could have came off, loosened up. Something like that. I haven't had this open yet, so I'm doing this real time. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but I can't tell you we're gonna figure it out. All right. Well, got that gasket in real bad shape real quick. That's okay, a lot of times they break, they're just brittle when they come off, so no big deal there. Let's see what we got, everything looks Looks in pretty good shape, pretty tight. Not really seeing any issues with the valves or anything else at this point. Everything is looking kind of really like it should. Again, not seeing, not seeing really anything, anything out of the ordinary here at this point. That doesn't mean that there's not. We heard that backfire, so we know something's going on over on this side. Let's see. So the valves all look like they're good. I don't really see an issue there. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take this cover off real quick. Go ahead and take the top cover so I can turn the engine easily. And we'll come back and figure out exactly what we have going on. So I've got the top off here so we can spin this nice and easy and check out the valves and their exact movement here. On first inspection, everything looks to be moving good. We're going to check the valve spacing. Now these are hydraulic lifters. You just want a little bit of play there. That's great. Um, hydraulic lifters basically means it uses the oil pressure of the engine in order to set the valve spacing. So you've got down in there essentially a... Um, basically a little hydraulic cylinder that pumps up and it's what sets the valve spacing of the unit on these so kind of similar to a car i'm not real well versed in them or anything like that but if there are no adjustments on anything here as far as the valves go you know that it's hydraulic lifters because there's no uh, adjustment now you do want to pay close attention that the bolt on either one of these rocker holders hasn't came and backed out Sometimes they'll back out and then it won't be sealed down against the aluminum there So this piece will actually be able to rock one way or the other So you want to make sure that's not the case on either one and that neither of the push rods is bent Or real loose or anything like that once they get bent a lot of times it won't you won't see the push rod here You won't see it um, Really have any issue, but it'll be real real sloppy and you won't notice that at all But it'll come off that'll cause your loss of power also see that quite a bit a lot of times it's just bent push rods or the bolts backed out um, you also want to pay attention to how far the valve comes back out so if you're looking the valve should come out in an equal amount of space now these are kind of hard to see uh, just because they're at different angles and stuff but just make sure they come out all the way you know if if one's getting stuck to where there's a lot of space in between your um, rocker here 
and your actual valve at the top, you know you have an issue. You know your valve's not coming back out or closing all the way because it's when they come out to this side is when they actually close on the back side. So everything is looking good at this point. I don't see anything wrong with the valves or the push rods or anything like that. Um, again, a lot of times I throw a compression test on it, but it looks like everything's functioning properly and it doesn't sound to me like it's a compression issue. Um, let's see here. So if I'm looking up top, the next thing is looking at the coil. Now we got a good spark. Let's see here. So it almost looks like. So I wonder if we're having an issue here. It looks like we're actually getting cross feed that's arcing back to the coil from where, where that wire has been rubbing and just grounding out there. Now that would give you inconsistent spark, bad spark, and could cause those backfires because you've got too much fuel or it's only firing every other time that it's coming around or something like that. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and throw this plug back in there real quick and throw that valve cover back on and see what it does. We're gonna keep this wire unplugged for our coil. And this is basically just isolating the coil from the rest of the electronic system. At this point, we know the valves and everything are good. All of our spacing's good. We tested good spark, but sometimes you can't trust that. Even if you, even if you visibly see it against the block, that doesn't mean that it's sparking every time that it comes around or anything like that. It's hard to tell exactly when those sparks are happening so it almost looks to me like that like that's going to be our issue is just a um, bad kill wire going back to the coil rubbing out so we'll find out here very shortly uh, again while you're in here you can test all that you can run these independently by unplugging the kill wires that'll tell you if one's working or one isn't working and it's the same thing, you can run it independently with them unplugged and that bypasses your uh, whole electronic system. Just like with unplugging the plug, you bypass everything of the unit, so. I'm just gonna go ahead and snug these up. I do have another rocker cover gasket. I'll throw on there, obviously, if that's the problem. But we're not really worried about it leaking oil right at this very second. Just trying to figure out what the issue is. So I've got the plug wire unplugged over here. I've got the top unplugged. Now you want to be mindful depending on what unit you're doing this on. Uh, if it doesn't have a after fire solenoid or it's not working, when you turn the key off, it may not turn off if your uh, kill wire is disconnected. So just be sure everything's free and that you're being safe when you're doing this. You don't want something to start and not be able to turn it off. So. so I fire it up there. It starts, runs perfect, no issue whatsoever. And obviously it still sounds kind of... Uh, uh, kind of labored because it is because I'm only running I'm not running on this cylinder at this point I'm only running on this cylinder, which is the one that wasn't working. So I'm sure whenever we get it completely started or whatever that we're gonna get some major smoke out of it because this side hasn't been burning for a little while It's been grounding out at this kill wire. So that's what our issue has been in this point You know again, there's a lot of these different issues depending on the situation and depending on uh, the mower and the motor uh going on but a lot of these kill wires will hit somewhere or be attached you know just check this wire all the way along if it's rubbing up against metal anywhere that can cause just a tiniest little nick in that wire and that's going to lead it to spark back to ground and you're gonna your cylinder is going to be dropping out so very easy i've got another one over there a simplicity that sounds to me like it's having the same type of issue right now um we're going to check it out. Another company checked it out and quoted a bad head gasket and $3,500 worth of repair on this simplicity over here. The thing's not worth that, but uh, we're going to check it out a little later. But I, I think that's the issue that's going on there. So it, it's a common issue across the board, no matter what kind of mower you're looking at, uh, whether it's a zero turn or a regular rider, anything V-twin. If you're getting loss of power or intermittent running or anything like that, 
uh, when you hear it, you can you can almost hear it drop out a lot of times, but it, it does take a trained ear to hear that. But check that uh, kill wire, and then if it's getting hot and then shutting down or getting hot and then having that issue, it can be one of the coils also. So depending on what your situation is, sometimes you can uh, leave it running, you know, in a uh, in an environment where you're mowing, uh, you know, real thin stuff or something like that, leaving everything. Uh, completely uncovered and mowing with it and then testing as you go from there you know you can pull a plug wire as it's hot figure out what's going on but coils do fail a lot um, they go bad especially when things heat up you know they, they tend not to work or drop out further at that point now here's a couple different designs that uh, you may come across uh, two of the more common ones on some different Briggs engines I believe these are both Briggs heads anyway. They look pretty familiar as far as that goes. Not uh, that should be a Briggs V twin, like a Vanguard type. This may be a cylind single cylinder Briggs. Either way, you're going to come across some different uh, styles as far as how to adjust the valves on these. Now, if those valves aren't, if they don't have just a little bit of play to them, to where there's a little bit of looseness in between your valve and your actual uh, rocker here, you're gonna wanna adjust the valve spacing. Now the valve comes up, you know, through the engine and it's gonna push from the bottom here, right down in. Yeah, that one doesn't wanna work right for some reason. Maybe why it's here. So it's gonna be pushing from there and that's what's gonna set the spacing as far as your valve goes. Now the torque here along with the, I think it's a 13 millimeter, um, not that's what's going to set the valve spacing depending on how far that's in or out it it sets the spacing in between your rocker and your actual valve here so you will want to go ahead and loosen that and uh, set the spacing in between the um, rocker and the valve should they be too tight now that a lot of times with the symptom of what was going on there that that's going to be something to where it's either too tight otherwise the studs backed out uh, there's something in between the where the valve seats at the bottom and the back side. We see that a lot. So as your valve opens on the back side, something, a uh, piece of a spark plug or it, something gets down in the spark plug hole somehow um, and blocks that off. We see a lot of times a uh, piece like a screw from the uh, choke body or something like that come off and get engulfed down into the engine. It'll be in between the valve and the head there causing an issue like that. We do see those a lot. Now on something like this, your spacing is a little different. It's actually up here on top. So you've got to loosen the torques here and you actually move the nut and that's what controls the difference um, as far as the rocker distance goes. So obviously your push rod's coming up through and it's pushing there. But depending on how far this is in or out, that's going to change your spacing. So you want to measure with your feeler gauge in between there and adjust accordingly on your um, valve lash. That should uh, hopefully give you everything you need to know and get you taken care of if you're having an issue with low power on one of these. Now, if everything checks out here, uh, it's still not running after you've checked this uh, other cylinder or this other coil. You know, you've got good spark on this coil. You've got uh all the rockers and everything are working good you've got everything there is good from that point you'll want to run a compression test so you can do that uh with a compression test or you can also do a leak down test uh either way is going to tell you you know kind of what the um what the uh complete view of your of your cylinder is on this side because this is the cylinder that is not running independently so the cylinder head uh could be blown out you know, in between, now this is a single cylinder Briggs, but could be blown out in between where the cylinder is and where the rocker is, causing some issues. It could be blown out between where the cylinder head is and to the outside. A lot of times you'll see signs of that if you look down through in where your cylinder head is, though, you'll see leaking oil or, you know, some sort of marking telling you that that's the case. But uh, that that's really pretty much everything you need to know about why a cylinder wouldn't be firing, you know? Um, compression is a big one, you know? But you can also look down through the spark plug hole uh, as you're turning it over um, to see if you have good compression, or at least see if the piston's moving up and down. To see if you have good compression, if you don't have a compression tester, you know, you can take the plug wires off and go ahead and just stick your thumb over the hole while you're turning it over. If you got good compression, it's gonna blow your thumb off. But that's a real, 
just kind of a real basic way of knowing if you have compression. You have no idea what that compression actually is. You can still have pretty low compression, um, and that that uh, compression will still blow your uh, thumb right off that hole. So hopefully that gives you everything you need to know. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.